In the second tutorial for editing eyes in Photoshop, we're not only going to explore various ways of achieving this retouch, but also touch upon the key fundamental of learning why things work in Photoshop. Let's take a look at what lays ahead in this tutorial. I'm gonna leave it on normal because I don't mind the effects that it's having on the color itself. I'm gonna hit Control or Command and the letter I so that I can now paint white, again, very carefully, into the darker parts of the eye. So now let's go ahead and reduce the opacity and start pulling it down just to see that general wash of blue. If I hit Control or Command and zero, we're seeing those crystal blue eyes, which look And now beautiful. I'm gonna invert the mask and then zoom in. B for brush, change my flow to 10%, paint white. Just in those little specular bits and pieces through here. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. Today's journey is going to be the first of its kind for the retouching series. Instead of going through a step-by-step -step process to achieve the retouch of the eyes, we're going to explore a variety of techniques that can achieve it. It is vital as you continue your education in Photoshop that you develop your own toolkit, or simply put, that you learn more than one way of doing something. One technique may not always work. One tool or process may not be better than others, again, depending upon the image. The more ways you know to achieve a result, the more art you can create in Photoshop. Let's take a look at an overview of today's tutorial. We'll demonstrate another beginner-friendly and simple way to retouch the eyes of our subject, using my approach to Photoshop fundamentals. We'll then explore a slightly more complex way of retouching the eyes of a subject, using tools that are applicable to all types of work in Photoshop. Finally, we'll explore an image that requires more finesse to be able to use our previously learned techniques to achieve the retouch. Before we get started, I would like to ask your help in reaching my first goal for this channel on YouTube, which is to earn a thousand subscribers. At the time of this recording, we're sitting at 923 and the goal is in sight. If you like the content you find in the tutorial today, then please give it a like and consider subscribing. New content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education, and when you subscribe, make sure to click the bell to be notified of that new content when you return to YouTube. I sincerely appreciate your support, and now let's get the show on the road and hit us up some Photoshop. Before we dive in today, I wanna have a brief teaching moment to mention something that you may already think of or see Photoshop this way, but I would feel remiss if I didn't take the time to say it to you now. I'm going to show you different tools and techniques of filters and things you can do with Photoshop associated to retouching eyes, but I want you to see these things just as tools, not tied to one specific form of a retouch. Because these elements go way beyond just retouching eyes. When you store this away in your creative mind and then you come up with a new challenge in Photoshop, a new image you have to work on, you can call back to just these tools to be able to use them to create artwork. We're gonna use a curves adjustment layer to brighten the eyes, but curves can be used to brighten a building, to change colors within the scene, to add special effects and so much more. It's one tool that has multiple uses. This is the key to learning why things work in Photoshop and to expanding your knowledge of Photoshop, your mastery of Photoshop. Building a toolkit, understanding what these tools do so that every time you're faced with a challenge with an image, you can call back to your creative mind and say, I know five different ways to solve this problem. Let me explore each one to see which one gives me the best results. I use actions every day in my Photoshop work and most of the actions are actions that I have created. I love actions. They, they are wonderful tools of efficiency in Photoshop, but they have a drawback. And the drawback is it replicates steps for you in Photoshop, but if you don't understand what those things are, those layers that it populates. If you haven't utilized them all on their own, just for testing and experimentation, you're not building your toolkit as accurately and as quickly as you can. So I highly encourage you, experiment with the tools that we work with today. Understand what they do. Try them in different applications, different images, so you can fully understand why things work in Photoshop. And soon you'll be creating amazing artwork, solving problems as fast as you can 
use your Wacom pen and click things in Photoshop to do it. So with that, let's get started. I'm going to do two different simple retouches to the eyes today. And this is aimed toward the beginners that are stepping into Photoshop for the first time, or you're considering potentially coming from Adobe Lightroom into Adobe Photoshop. So the first simple retouch, we're going to duplicate this layer by hitting Control or Command and the letter J. And then we're going to hit Control, Shift and A or Command, Shift and A to take this layer into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Now, if you're familiar with Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, it's practically the same thing as the develop module. It's just a different user interface. This is where we're going to call into what I consider fundamentals of Photoshop. And those three fundamentals are color, luminosity and detail. Those three elements are where you begin when you want to do a retouch, regardless of whatever you're targeting within the retouch itself. If you're stuck on working on an image and you don't know what to do next, take a step back and look at the color, the luminosity, and the details within the image. And one of those elements will jump out at you and give you a sense of a path to follow for the retouch itself. So in that ideology of color, luminosity, and detail, those fundamentals, I'm going to simply start with luminosity. I'm going to increase the overall exposure. Of course, I'm blowing out the image, but it doesn't matter because we're just looking at the eyes. Uh, exposure looks good. Let's go ahead and push up the highlights and the white point. All three of these deal with increasing light within the image itself. Let's um, take out the shadows just a little bit and take out the black point. Is that increasing light? Not directly, but as a consequence or byproduct of reducing the shadows, of taking out the black point within the image, it makes things a little bit brighter. Um, let's look at details. So for color luminosity details, let's go ahead and increase the texture of this. Clarity is really giving it a sense of high dynamic range or HDR. Uh, Dehaze is also increasing the overall contrast within the scene. And by increasing the contrast, the details themselves are starting to come out. So thinking about elements of color, luminosity, and detail, things like contrast can support that. Things like removing shadows from a scene can make things feel brighter instead of just always adding exposure. Uh, let's look at vibrance and saturation. We'll go ahead and just increase those. We're at the color section now of color, luminosity, and detail. I'm gonna to come to the fourth tab, the hue, saturation, luminance tab, my favorite tab in Adobe Camera Raw. And we're on the saturation tab. Let's go ahead and increase the overall saturation of just the color blue. As we found in the previous video of retouching eyes, she pretty much has every color of the spectrum in her iris, which is why her eyes are beautiful. So we could enhance all of these sliders uh, in the hue saturation tab, uh, but we just will do blue for today's purposes. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now this layer that Adobe Camera Raw has produced is a hot mess, except her eyes. <laughs> Her, she looks like an Oompa Loompa that's overexposed, but we're going to use a layer mask to paint that in. So at the bottom of the layer stack, this is the layer mask icon. I'm going to hold alter options so that I will make a black mask or a hide all mask. And now I can paint white onto this black mask to reveal the effect of what we just did in Adobe Camera Raw. So my brush is opacity is 100%, my flow is 100%, and I'm on a soft brush, so it does not have a hard edge at all. In the iris, I'm going to paint 100% flow and opacity through this area to really call out those beautiful colors, the beautiful luminosity and details that we see into the scene. Then I'm gonna change the flow of my brush to like 20% by hitting shift and the number two. And now I'm gonna paint over where the whites of the eyes are. And that probably was a little bit too much because as we mentioned in the previous video, you don't want to have one element that is more overly retouched than others. Subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. This is one of my major fundamentals of Photoshop. Always work subtly when you're working on an image itself. So if I hit controller command and the number zero, I will zoom all the way back out. The whites of the eyes look like they're just a little too much because it's just pulling way too much focus. So B for brush, I'm gonna change my flow to 5% now by hitting shift Z zero and five all at the same time. Now I'm gonna switch my foreground color from white to black and start painting black onto this mask to start taking away the effect. And I'm gonna do that just over the whites of the eyes that we just painted to minimize the overall effect. Now control or command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out. That looks significantly better. This is a simple retouch with one layer using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, using the fundamentals and mandates of color, luminosity and detail. Enhancing all three of those is able to produce this result. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna show you another simple way of retouching eyes. This is the way that I learned to retouch eyes nearly 20 years ago. And this is one of the first ways that was taught way back then. I read it out of a magazine because education back then 
YouTube wasn't in existence. And so you either you read magazines or you went to photography conferences to learn. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer twice by hitting control or command and the letter J one, two. And what we're going to do for the first one here is this one, we're going to relabel it and call it whites. This next one, we're going to relabel this if I can get access to the, there we go, iris. And you know what, I lied, we gotta duplicate it one more time. I haven't done this technique in a long time. So we're gonna duplicate it for a third time and our fourth layer here will be called um, iris ring. So this is introducing another key fundamental of Photoshop, a powerful tool, if you will, of Photoshop. So again, if you're a beginner to Photoshop, this is something that you really want to be able to store away in your creative mind. We're gonna utilize layer blending modes. We did that in the previous video and we're gonna do it now. I said in the previous video that layer blending modes to me are one of the most powerful elements of Photoshop because essentially you're taking all the existing information in this picture and letting a layer blending mode dictate how it interacts with the rest of the layers within the overall document itself. So for the whites of the eyes, I'm gonna turn off these top two layers so we can see the effects as we go. For the whites of the eyes, I'm gonna change the layers blending mode from normal to screen, it makes everything brighter. So again, store that away. A layer blending mode switch to screen makes everything brighter. We can do that to paint it in for the whites of the eyes, the namesake of the layer. We could also do that for the iris itself if we wanted to, but I wanted it on a separate layer because I'm gonna introduce a couple other things. However, store it away that if you need to make something brighter, simply make the layer blending mode switched to screen. Just duplicate the layer once, put it to screen, then use a black mask and paint it in wherever you want it to be within your image. I'm gonna to go to the iris layer and turn that one on. And now it's back to normal, so everything returned to normal. Let's go ahead and change the blending mode of this one to screen as well. And then we'll turn on the iris ring, the very top layer, everything returned to normal because it's on a blending mode of normal. The iris ring is that black outer ring. I think it's called the limb ball ring in the eye. So I'm gonna change the blending mode of this one to multiply because it makes everything darker within the scene. If we take a look really quickly at the layer blending modes, again, if you're new to Photoshop, uh, this is for you. If you're an advanced user of Photoshop, then go make a cup of coffee. So if you don't like coffee, drink tea. So at the top of each one of these sections, there's a word like darken. This pretty much is the namesake of what everything else in this section of layer blending modes does. So under darken, there's multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color. They all pretty much make the image darker in varying ways. The next section is lighten. They make everything a little bit brighter. For overlay, it's essentially letting uh, layers or images or elements interact with the image by taking something away and taking something out and infusing it down. It's almost like a filter, hence the word overlay. You're overlaying something to the layer itself. Difference, exclusion, and subtract and divide, those are just creepy. Those are the people at the party that stare at the potted plant the entire time and you don't want to be seen talking to them because they're creepy. So we're just not even going to talk about those today. Hue, saturation, color, and luminosity, the last four at the bottom. Those obviously deal with color, but what's so interesting is that there are two blending modes that call back to the fundamentals that I just talked about, color and luminosity. And we'll be using those blending modes today later in the retouch. So uh, again, when we're on multiply, it makes everything darker. Now we need to put a black mask onto every one of these layers so that we can selectively paint it into the scene where we want it to be. So I'm going to click on the layer that says whites, hold alter option and click the layer mask icon, makes a black mask. Do the same thing for iris and the same thing for the iris ring. Now we'll return to a normal view of our image because even though all of these layers are active, they have black masks on them, so they're not being revealed at all. They're there, they're active, but you can't see them. The one you can see is just this background layer, which is on a blending mode of normal. So I'm clicking the whites layer mask, zooming in, B for brush, changing my flow to 100%, so I'll be painting white onto this mask at 100%. Now, when you're painting in Photoshop, I've said this many, many times, and this is something that I've done for many years. When you're doing carefully controlled painting, targeted selected painting within a scene or a mask, I don't try to stay inside the lines because it just, it takes too much time. Too much efficiency is lost when you're sitting there very carefully painting along the line like that. I prefer to just paint in a general sense where the shape needs to be, the whites of the eyes. I, of course, went outside the line. I went on to her, the bottom of her eyelids, I went potentially into the iris itself. When I'm doing targeted painting like this in a relatively small area, what I do is again, get a good shape, making sure that we pretty much fill in all the whites of the eyes. Then I switch my foreground color back to black so that I can paint it away. And I can make one smooth gesture with my mouse like this, or with my walk and pen in this case, and paint things away. Of course, I went just a little too far. 
and then we can go right through here and paint it away. Now, this is at 100% flow and opacity. I said this in the previous video and I demonstrated this specific technique. This is what I call nuclear eye. So when you're retouching, subtlety is key. You don't want to leave everything at 100% potentially like this. So I'm going to lower the overall opacity of this layer down to usually I start around 30% and see how that looks. 30% turning it on and off. It's just a gentle little boost to the whites of the eyes. I think that looks pretty good, so we're good to go. I'm going to click the black layer mask for the iris itself. B for brush, change my flow to 100% to make sure it's there. And then switch my foreground color to white. Do the same thing we just did a moment ago. And because the blending mode has been set to screen, everything is brighter now. So we can see the entire illumination of the iris. Now I mentioned this in the previous video for retouching eyes. I'm going to call it out again. You need to pay respect to the actual three dimensions within this image and the highlights and shadows that dictate three dimension. So if we look at the top of the eyelid, there's a natural shadow that's cast over the iris itself. That shadow shows us that the eyelid comes out because we need that corresponding shadow to the highlights we see at the top of the eyelid to understand three dimensions. So in this case, I don't want to paint the iris all the way around. So I'm going to hit B for brush, hit shift and the number one to change my flow to 10% and then hit the letter X to switch my foreground color back to black because I'm going to start painting this away and it's called feathering it. I'm just gonna feather away the effect just a little bit at the top of the iris because I want that natural shadow to be there. So hitting control or command and the number zero to zoom all the way back out. We can see the effect of this layer, but she's starting to look like a, a young adult novel that deals with vampires and they're all like emo and goth and whatever. And I'm just not going to handle that today. So I'm going to reduce the overall opacity of this layer. Let's go down to 75%. And that looks good. You want a boost to, to the iris and you want to be able to see the light within that scene, but you don't want it to be overpowering just like the whites of the eyes itself. Now let's go to the third uh, adjustment or third layer that we're going to be working with today. And this is for the iris ring. B for brush, shift and zero. So we're gonna be painting at a full 100%. Want to paint white onto the black mask to reveal it. And I'm painting this very thick black line around her iris ring. And I've had two and a half cups of coffee today because I got up really early. So my hand's shaking just, just a tad. Just a, just, a, just a little bit. So the, the ring is not perfect, but that's okay because again, like we've been saying, subtlety is key. We're going to reduce the overall opacity of this and bring it down starting to around 30% before and after. It's just a subtle little push to that iris ring. And again, from a design perspective, it's helping us to focus the iris so that the viewer will have no choice but to see all that beautiful color because it's contained within that black circle of the iris ring itself. If it's too much, just lower the opacity just a little bit further so that it's a gentle little push to it. Some people have a really strong iris ring. Some people have virtually none at all. So again, utilizing this layer on a blending mode of multiply gives you that opportunity to be able to do that. Now, the last thing that I would want to do is to start pulling in some of those interesting details, some of those speculars uh, within the iris itself to start calling all of that out. There's other ways I'm going to demonstrate that to you in the tutorial today that's a little bit more intermediate. But again, for the beginner, this is where we're going to call into using adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are found here under this icon in the layers window. And essentially, these are gateways. They're, they're gateways to tell Photoshop to do something to the layer below wherever it's affecting it, all the layers below, or if you just clip one of these adjustment layers to it. It's the equivalent of going into Adobe Camera Raw or the develop module in Lightroom and saying that you wanna use a slider. These are living sliders. They're just their own layer. So you can get great control over how they work. So I'm gonna make a hue saturation adjustment layer, and this is in the layer stack above the iris ring. And now I want to start increasing the overall saturation of the color that we see, color, luminosity, and detail. So if I do that right now, the way it is, it's going to increase the entire uh, saturation of the entire scene like this and return her back to Willy Wonka's factory, which we don't want. So we need to clip this hue saturation adjustment layer to the layer of just the iris so that it will only affect that layer. So there's two ways that are very easy to do this. You can put your cursor in between the two layers and then hold alter option and it will switch to a square with a little arrow pointing down that designates that this is going to now clip to the iris ring. Or 
within the properties window of the hue saturation adjustment layer, here's the same icon. If you click it, now the hue saturation adjustment layer is clipped down. So you can see this little arrow that is here. And that's a way of showing you, that was like a psychedelic effect. That's a way of showing you ultimately that this is now only going to affect just the iris. So since the iris has a black mask, the layer for that's designated for iris has a black mask and we painted white over the iris uh, itself, when I increase the overall saturation of this adjustment layer, we can see the iris is getting just a little bit more saturated in that regard because we're just increasing it in this way. So in the previous video, I showed you how I used the information of the picture itself, changing the blending mode to color dodge so that it would dodge the image. Dodge and burn makes things brighter when we dodge and using colors and boosting the colors a little bit as well within the scene. We can do that same thing here, but we can also use a curves adjustment layer to achieve this. And this is where, again, adjustment layers are a very powerful tool inside of Photoshop. And I want you to store that away. These are tools. These are wonder. Think of it like the adjustment brush in Lightroom. You're using a brush to paint in one of the sliders you moved around. Adjustment layers are the same thing. They're their own layer. And what's lovely about it is that you can clip it to a layer below. You can let it affect an entire stack of layers or the adjustment layers themselves also fall into the purview of being affected by layer blending modes. So first let's clip this curves adjustment layer to it. Let's go ahead and hold our cursor in between the two layers, hold alter option till we see that icon and then click. Now these two adjustment layers here are only affecting this layer of the iris. This is on a normal blending mode for the curves adjustment layer. Let's talk about a curve really quickly. If I click the icon, we can see what it will do. So curves adjustment layers, you know what, let me unclip it so we get uh, some of our histogram into the scene. Curves adjustment layers are a way to simply introduce more light into the scene or shadows. It's a way to control either element, but you have some other uh, elements that come into play with it. So very briefly, this is the histogram. We can see an anchor point here and here with this line in between. So if we start to move this triangle to the left, we're making everything darker within the scene, but that line is moving with it. It's showing us how it's moving through the information with the picture, the information with the histogram. So we start to see where things start to fall off completely or you know, get uh, where they're quote unquote normal. If we move the white, we do the same thing. That line's moving across it. A curve adjustment layer lets us actually do precisely that, its namesake. If I put an anchor point right into the center of this line, I can manipulate that line, which is moving it through the information of the histogram to make things brighter in this regard, or take it down and make things darker. It's similar to that little triangle that we painted, but what's lovely about the curve is that we can do minimal controls by moving the, the point around so that that line fluctuates within the histogram. So we use curves adjustment layers. If you watch the retouching series for dodge and burn, that's how we use curves adjustment layers for it in this scene. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that anchor point. Curves adjustment layers, by the way, just very quickly, do a wonderful thing too. You can go in from RGB right now, it's affecting the red, green, and blue within the image. We can also target select one color region. And if we do that, let's go ahead and clip it back to our iris ring. If I come back here and click blue, make an anchor point in the center and start pushing it up, her eyes are becoming more blue because I'm adding more light to the blue channel of RGB. So I can infuse color into her eyes this way. I can also, what's the opposite of blue? If we take it down, we're starting to infuse a little bit of yellow into the scene. So I can start increasing things this way and use multiple curves adjustment layers to add color to the scene very selectively, just using this menu of RGB. By the way, when I do special effects and all the composite work that I do, this is how I do it. So I'm gonna leave it set to blue, but um, what I wanna show you is again, the layer blending mode for this is set to normal. So if I change this to color dodge, as it was before, we are seeing those specular highlights in there. I left the blue channel up just a little bit in light, so we get a lot of beautiful color in there and those specular highlights. But if I turn off the hue saturation adjustment layer, there's a significant change as you can see here. So adjustment layers built up on top of each other when they're clipped down to one layer is a great way for you to target select utilizing these tools to enhance the iris. But you could do it for enhancing the colors within clothing, within the building behind them, the sky, all of those different elements. Play around with curves adjustment layer, play around with all the adjustment layers, they're amazing. And explore the different layer blending modes, including the really weird ones sitting in the corner at the party, eating the fern that happened. So 
Once this is all done, let's take a step back, controller command zero, and take a look at it. Her eyes are starting to look a little uh, uh, Edward vampire -y, a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and reduce the overall opacity of this curves adjustment layer that was set to color dodge. It was increasing the specular highlights, and that was giving us just a little bit too much of that vampire taste. So at this point, everything looks good from color and luminosity. Now let's go into detail. So at the top of the layer stack, everything that is active here is visible and seen. At the top of the layer stack, I'm going to click it so that it's the topmost layer that I'm on. Then I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E if you're on a Macintosh, E for everything. We've made a composite layer of all the active layers now, and it's at the top of the layer stack. And this is where we're going to utilize one of the two or three different techniques I'm going to show you today on how to sharpen the details within the image, essentially addressing the details aspect of color luminosity and detail. So with this layer active, I'm going to come up to filter, other, and then high pass. High pass has been used for years and years and years. I've used it for, I've been working in Photoshop for 20 years. I've used it since like year I don't know, because it's a great way to add sharpening to the image. And it was one of the first ways to, to really start pulling out high dynamic range or HDR within the images themselves, because it works with the contrast within the scene. But you also have to be very careful because as you increase the overall effect of the high pass filter, as we increase the radius of pixels that it can see and you essentially do its effect, we're going to start introducing haloing on the edge. Haloing is where essentially the, the pixels themselves are for lack of a better word, getting burned. They're getting oversaturated, over affected by this technique of high pass. And that's going to be seen in the image and it's going to give it a really not so pleasing look. So the higher you take this, the more that you're going to introduce haloing. However, little side teaching moment here, haloing isn't necessarily a bad thing because haloing on the outer perimeter of the image, in this case, like we can see on her ear and her jawline, we can see the halo that doesn't look good, but the halo painted inside the face, inside shadowy areas like the area underneath her nose. Let's zoom in just a little bit here so that we can see a little bit more in the actual image itself. The shadow under her nose, some of the shadows within her lips and so forth. If you're looking to do a stylized illustrative retouch, a, a painting-like effect, this is one of the tools you can use to achieve that because it's addressing the contrast within the scene, pushing the contrast to a point where those halos are really accentuated. But if it's just addressed within the shadows of the scene, you can paint that in and create an interesting effect. I'm gonna return the radius back to let's say three because that, that's pretty good here. And of course, this live view of this one layer that we just made with high pass, it looks creepy, right? Because we need to change the layers blending mode so that it can affect the image and really pull out the details itself. So I'm gonna hit okay to accept that radius of pixels that we just chose. Then go to the layer blending modes, anywhere from overlay here through linear light. These five are the ones that you would want to use if you use the high pass filter to increase details. And linear light is kind of the strongest infusion of the high pass layer and soft light is the least amount infused into it. So as a side note, I use the high pass filter on a general setting to do just a general amount of sharpening to the entire image when I'm doing a beauty retouch like this. But when I'm retouching the eyes, I will use linear light and then I'm gonna put a black mask onto this effect so that I can paint it in very carefully where I want it to be, selectively, I should say, and I'm gonna be painting with white onto my mask right over the iris itself. And on linear light, all of that contrast, all of those details are being pulled out into her iris. Controller command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out. And we're starting to see some of those beautiful bits of information within her iris that are making them jump out. We do need to take that design assessment here. If there is too much effect of any one of these layers where she starts to look like a vampire, we need to lessen it just a little bit. Subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. So that's a, a I know <laughs> it's, it's a simple retouch, right? But realistically, if you're new to Photoshop, congratulations, you just learned some of the most powerful steps in Photoshop to achieve results. And don't be afraid of it. Follow this tutorial for the eyes, but duplicate the layer, change the blending mode to overlay or to soft light, do a high pass filter and just experiment with it. Use the layer mask to paint it in in different areas. Do a high pass layer at that really high amount of pixels, like 30 pixels, and then bring it back in, change that blending mode to start with overlay. 
and put a black mask onto it and start painting it into the areas of the shadows you see within the interior of the face, just like you would if you were dodging and burning. You'll start to see an interesting result. Understanding why these tools work, experimenting with them is going to build that toolkit and let you create amazing artwork in Photoshop itself. So I'm gonna delete all of this to return us to our base layer. So now I'll take you through the more complex retouch, the more advanced retouch. And this is the way that I used to retouch eyes a, a while ago. And we're gonna be using different curves, adjustment layers and so forth. And the reason why I wanna demonstrate this today is because I said in the previous video that showing you that more simple technique works well on this picture of Veronica because it's even lighting, it's beauty lighting where the lights above, butterfly lighting I should say, where the lights above and it's cascading down so we get some nice sculpt to the jawline and so forth, but her eyes have a lot of illumination in it. If we look at this picture of Katarina Keen, by the way, you can see all of her amazing work by following the Instagram link below. In this case, I did a lot of dramatic lighting within the scene. So there is a strip box that is on camera left that is bringing in an orange gel, but it's really not creating a lot of light. And as we zoom into her eyes, we can see the telltale catch light here of the 47 inch Octabox that is off camera right and is infusing just a little bit of light into the scene because we can also see there's some blue on the bridge of her nose. This is an indication that there is a light boomed above her that has a blue gel. I used a white light in this scene in this gelled glamour image to just infuse a little bit more white within the scene. She's standing against the metal wall so that metal wall lit up like uh, it was its job when the flash hit it. If we look into her, the, her eyes, they're a little too dark just at this base compared to the picture of Veronica. So utilizing just a simple duplication of this layer and changing the blending mode to color dodge to get the specular highlights is practically going to do nothing. So controller command and J to duplicate the layer, change it to color dodge. And we can see the colors on her face pop out instantaneously because there's a lot of illumination from the lights in the studio on her face, but not in her eyes. This is where coming in with curves adjustment layers, levels adjustment layers, other methods to explore to add light to the scene and exploring not just the adjustment layer, but the blending modes as well to see what kind of result we can produce. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer and come back to Veronica very quickly and go through the same mechanisms here again. Uh, very briefly, duplicate the layer. This is for the whites of the eyes. Um, let's go ahead and go back to screen. And you know what? Highlight. Let's we'll make it very fast because I just went several steps back in my history to use the actual layer I just made just a moment ago. So everything looks pretty good. So what I want to do now is I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer, and this is for the iris ring itself. And I'm going to push up the curve so we get some light into the scene. And I'm also going to increase the overall threshold of the whites within it. That's going to start pushing it, but it's also introducing just a little bit of contrast into the scene. That's going to help some of that detail jump out into the iris itself. I'm going to invert this mask that came with the curves adjustment layer. So then now it's black and I can paint white onto it. I'm gonna double click the word curves and we'll call this one iris one. Now zoom in, make sure that I'm on the layer mask, B for brush and paint white over the iris. So that we start getting some of that illumination into the scene. But because I gave it a hint of contrast, we're seeing just a little bit of detail in the darker parts of the iris itself that ultimately will help us let some of that stand out and come into play. Now I'm gonna make another curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna do the same thing again and push it up ever so slightly. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to color dodge so we get some of those interesting speculars. Now what's fascinating is that it's building on top of the existing curves adjustment layer that we just added the luminosity to. So even just a little bit of a push is really giving us a lot of interesting speculars within the scene. I'm gonna invert the mask by hitting Control or Command and the letter I. And now I'm gonna zoom in and go eye to eye. I'm gonna change the flow of my brush to 2% by hitting Shift, zero and two so that I can paint white into the scene. And I'm just gonna start painting white very carefully over the little bits and pieces of the eye that I wanna start pulling out some of those speculars. I'm gonna increase the flow of my brush to 5% for purposes of video, because I want this to go just a little bit faster. And we'll start getting some of those interesting little bits of white into the scene using that curves adjustment layer with a little bit of a push to it on that color dodge uh, blending mode itself. Let's go over to the other eye and uh, hopefully you can understand the process. I would take a little bit more time with this, especially on an image that is a beauty image that is very close up where we get to see a lot of the detail into the scene itself. So we're getting some of those interesting little bits of speculars there. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to make another curves adjustment layer 
And this time I'm going to make it just a little bit darker and introduce some more contrast right through there. I'm going to push up the scene to shorten the distance there. So we start to get more of those speculars where essentially it's adding more contrast because right now, by the way, this curves adjustment layer here is on a blending mode of normal. Let's talk about that color uh, option at the bottom, color and luminosity. We're going to explore luminosity. When you change the blending mode from normal to luminosity, it tells Photoshop to not let this curves adjustment layer affect the color data within the scene, just the light data within all the pixels themselves. So here's the look of it on normal. But if I come down here to luminosity, see how everything changes. It's no longer really contrasted, burned, sharp, vibrant, saturated, in other words, color. So if I come back up to normal versus luminosity, normal and luminosity. I'm going to leave it on normal because I don't mind the effects that it's having on the color itself. I'm going to hit control or command and the letter I so that I can now paint white again very carefully into the darker parts of the eye. Staying away from those areas where I just painted white into the scene. But if it goes into it, as we saw with pushing some contrast into the scene, some of the whites, the speculars got just a little bit brighter. So more that information came through. So let's push a little bit more into some of these areas. I'm also trying to stay close to the pupil itself because generally that's where you get to see a lot of different darker detail most of the time in an iris. And we can push that through and see all of that. So I think that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of different solid color adjustment layers. These are ways to start infusing color into the scene itself. So again, returning to the adjustment window here, and I'm going to come up and make my first solid color. And I'm going to pick a general blue because her eyes generally are blue. And I'm going to use this to start infusing color into the scene. So I want a base, but it doesn't matter. I don't have to make it as accurate as possible to her eyes because I can change it as we work. So I'm going to change this layers blending mode that we just made, this uh, adjustment layer of a solid color. I'm going to change it from normal down to color, and now it's turning the entire image this color. If I want to change the color, I just double click the icon, it brings up the color picker, I can pick a different color. And we can see that as I desaturate it, we still get a little hint of that color, but it's not as vibrant and as bright. So let's go ahead and get it to just a neutral color like that. Then I'm going to click um, uh, the layer mask itself and invert it by hitting Control or Command and the letter I for invert. B for brush, I'm gonna take my flow of my brush to 100% and paint it in over the iris. This of course is entirely too much. We need to feather this away, but we're gonna use opacity, uh, I should say, to, to pull it out. But I leave it at 100% opacity just so I can see where I'm actually painting. Let's get it all the way into the scene. And there we go. And this one I don't mind taking all the way up into the shadow that is cast by the upper eyelid because the color would just transcribe all the way up there and that's fine. So now let's go ahead and reduce the opacity and start pulling it down just to see that general wash of blue. If I hit Control or Command and zero, we're seeing those crystal blue eyes, which look beautiful. But again, this is too much. So I'm going to double click the icon of the solid color adjustment layer and bring the blue down just a little bit. So it's a little bit darker. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to make it feel bad about itself. All right, so we've decreased it just a little bit. And here's the before and after. It's a nice, subtle push of blue, but it's everywhere within the scene. I want to let it blend down into the actual pixels so that it doesn't look artificial. So what I'm going to do is use blend if. I'm going to tell this layer, for the folks that are beginners, I'm going to tell this layer I want you to infuse down into the image below, either using the shadows of the image below or the highlights, and let them come through or push down. So I'm going to double click on the layer anywhere where there's not a word or a thumbnail or a layer mask. Somewhere in this gray space, which brings up the layer style window. This is just for the solid color adjustment layer. And here is the blend if dialog. Make sure that it's on blend if gray, because ultimately it's going to let the midtones be the deciding factor between highlight and shadow. Very briefly, we talked about this in the dodge and burn video on the retouching series, that the three colors that represent luminosity values within Photoshop are black, white, and gray. Gray is midtones. That's the travel distance between light and shadow. Black is for shadows, white is for highlights. So this layer, the solid color adjustment layer, we can let the shadows of this layer disappear and let the ones come through. What I want is to let the shadows of the layer below come up and through. So I'm going to hold Alter Option and click this triangle. When I hold Alter Option, it splits it and feathers the effect of it. Let's move this window just a little bit so we can see what's happening underneath. 
As we start pulling this through, we're letting the original shadows come through just very minorly. Now I'm going to start closing the distance of this so more of it of, it, of the original shadows of the image are coming through. We're starting to see a preserving of the original colors, the original blues, the original yellows and teals and purples and everything that's in her iris. So if I hit OK, I think that looks pretty good. Control or Command and zero to zoom out just to get a good look. We turn it on and off. It's a gentle boost. Let's zoom in for the purposes of the video. If we turn it on and off, we're getting just a gentle little hint and boost of that color, which I think looks lovely. So now I'm going to come and make another solid color adjustment layer. This time I'm going to choose one of the oranges that I know is around her pupil. And I'm going to pick a medium tone of color. I don't want a super bright one because I'm going to change this to color dodge so that the colors really will jump out. I may change this to screen. I may change it to color itself, just depending how it works with this image. One solution, again, this is not a step-by-step -step process. One blending mode is not the answer for every single image. So let's invert the mask, zoom in. I'm gonna paint with white onto this mask and we're starting with a flow of 10%. And I'm just gonna start calling it in very briefly in these little areas around the base. I'm just kind of gently tapping the image, pulling it in. As you can see that little ring that's popping around, it's designated that I'm just very gently tapping the scene with my Wacom pen to start calling in some of this color. Let's do the same thing over here where we can see it around that iris wing itself. Just pulling in some of the color very gently in certain key areas. Once that's done, zoom out so you can see both eyes and reduce it. Subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. Start pulling the opacity of this down and start letting it feather out just a little bit. So we see some of the hints of those colors, but they don't have to be overpowering. It's just a gentle boost. Hopefully you can see the before and after from here, but let's zoom in even further to look at one eye before and after. Just little touches of it that are showing us where it's at and what's showing up within the scene itself. So I would enhance other colors this way, depending upon what we see within the image itself. And then ultimately I would make a uh, composite layer of everything here by hitting control, alt, shift, and E or command option, shift, and E on a Mac. This time I would take it up to sharpen and then come down to smart sharpen. I love smart sharpen. It's a wonderful way to get some great sharpening within the scene because with this one, we get obviously a lot of control a lot of control we are able to push up the amount of sharpening and the radius of how many pixels it's detecting so the contrast between the pixels is what's being sharpened which makes the pixels and the details feel like they're sharpened so we can travel a lot we can go out i think it's up to like 60 some yeah there we go and we're getting some of those the halos we're getting a lot of hdr effect which is worthy of experimentation if you're looking to do some fun illustrative work change the blending mode of this layer to some other different options and see what you get so i'm going to bring this back down Let's go to like, I don't know, three or four, 3.3 uh, 3 looks fine to me. We can reduce the overall noise, which is going to just lessen the effect. It's going to not make it as pixelated. So it will be slightly less sharp, so to speak. I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I zoom in and turn it on and off. Sharpening as a side note, teaching moment. Sharpening is a wonderful thing. But sharpening, depending upon the methods that you choose, can be overdone to the point that you're introducing artifacts into the scene. You're pixelating the existing pixels to the point that it looks not real. It looks artificial. So in this case, I like the overall sharpen that's to the entire scene itself. I don't mind it on her skin. So I would call this good for an eye retouch. We've looked at the color, the luminosity, and the detail within the scene. We've used things like curves adjustment layers here both to increase the light within the iris, but to also increase the blue that we saw into the scene itself and just increasing some of those existing colors. Using adjustment layers like hue and saturation and so forth to be able to increase it as we did previously, and then using solid color adjustment layers for this image at this version of the retouch to add in some of those existing colors. And I would do two or three more different color, uh, solid color adjustment layers, and I would also explore potentially changing them to screen and to working with them just a little bit. But let me show you one more thing really quickly. If I turn off this solid color adjustment layer here, I'm gonna make a really bright blue one. Here we go. I'm gonna change this one to overlay. It's a wonderful way, instead of using the blending mode of color, it's a wonderful way to let this color infuse down to create some interesting color within the scene itself. Let's grab um, this mask. This was for the uh, solid color adjustment layer that we did on color uh, as a blending mode. 
I'm going to click the mask and I'm going to hold alt or option and drag it up to the layer mask icon of this new solid color layer that I made. And it replicates the exact mask, both whether it's a hide all reveal all and where you paint it on it. So with this set to overlay, this bright blue is giving us that electric blue too within the scene. Is this good for a beauty retouch? No, but if you're making a movie poster, if you're doing special effects, if you're looking to make color somewhere else in the scene vibrant, if it's a high school senior portrait and they've got a cool letter jacket and you want to make the letter, the color of the letter stand out, this is a way to do it. Samp or sample the existing color, choose a color that's near it, make your solid color adjustment layer, change the blending mode to overlay, experiment with it and do it with soft light. It's even less of the effect and an interesting blue interesting blue <laughs> interesting new way to introduce blue to the scene i've had two cups of coffee i should be fine i'm gonna have to have like four more my gosh all right so uh we can of course change this color and as we start bringing it down it's a great way to start adding some darker tones of blue into the scene you can selectively paint these in i'm gonna fill my layer mask with black and zoom into the eye just to do a brief demo here. This is also a way to start selectively introducing, uh, we're at a flow of 10%, that's fine, it's probably gonna be a little too much here, but in the darker parts of the blue of her eye, we can also paint in a darker blue and let this come into play. Instead of just dealing with contrast or lights, we're also letting color tell the scene and tell the story of her eyes. We paint it in over here, just a little bit on those darker areas and there we go zoom out so we can see both eyes look at the details that are there now of course this is not finished if i reutilize this technique i would also want to utilize a, uh, another method of increasing light within the scene to balance it but we're starting to see the deeper colors the brighter colors we're starting to see the overall beauty of this iris by using advanced techniques that if you're new to photoshop i i don't mean this to to be insensitive or disparaging they're not that advanced. These techniques are not that advanced. They're just simply using adjustment layers. These have been in Photoshop for a very, very long time. They're just tools that you can look at, experiment with them for just a little bit to understand what they do, and then know how to start infusing them into your work itself. So let's go to the image for Cat and finish up uh, our tutorial today. So like I said, if I demonstrate, if I duplicated the layer and did it to color dodge, it's not going to really work because there's not enough light within the scene itself. So this is where we need to explore varying options of being able to increase the light just in her iris so that we can start building some of those tested methods to add color, to add sharpness and so forth. But if there isn't existing light, we're in trouble. So simple way, duplicate the layer, go into Adobe Camera Raw, Control, Shift, and A, Command, Shift, and A, increase the exposure like it's our job because it is. Let's push up the highlights and the whites and then say OK and mask it in. Now, when I photograph this, uh, one of the, the challenges of photographing gel glamour photography is that I prefer to keep the gels a little bit, or the overall settings for the camera, a little bit darker in the scene because it lets the richness of the color show up. If I try to properly expose her so I can see all the details and so forth in the image, especially with the eyes, the colors tend to get a little uh, washed out and so forth. And once uh, the Rona, directly off, then I'm going to be photographing in the studio again with some local talent here that we're very excited to get back together and start working. And I'll be producing uh, on set videos for you on this channel, showing you photography techniques of doing gelled photography, as well as just basic lighting patterns, some, some good tutorials for the beginners, as well as the advanced users of Photoshop and photography. So we can see now that I've increased the overall light, but something you have to be careful of is when you shoot an image and you, you don't have a lot of light in the shadows itself, as you start putting light into it, you can potentially start introducing a lot of noise within the scene. If we look at it now, there's the, the detail in the data is very pixelated because there just wasn't enough information there for the camera to be able to capture it and give it all of its worth of the ability of that camera because there just wasn't enough light within the scene. You can photograph an image that is super dark. And as you start adding light to it, you'll see the noise and the pixelation very quickly. So that's something that I have to be cognizant of as I choose a way to add light within the scene itself. But what we just did using Adobe Camera Raw has added light to it. If I hit Control or Command on the number zero to zoom back out. We can definitely see her irises now, which was the goal. Here's the before and here's the after. But of course, even at this effect, it looks a little supernatural, a little vampire-y. For... 
black leather jacket, blue, sexy, glamour outfit. That doesn't bother me as much from a story element uh, within this image, but that's just a tad too much within this scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce that. I'm gonna change or make a curves adjustment layer. If I change this to screen, we get a general lightning within the scene itself. And again, I haven't even made an anchor point on the curve. I've just changed the blending mode. That's why I like to use curves adjustment layers for anything where I need to add light into the scene because I have the first resource, which is the layer blending mode. The second resource is the curve itself, and I can make anchor points onto it to start adding even more light into the scene itself. So let's go ahead and borrow this mask that we just made, alter option and click it and drag it up so that we can see the overall effect here. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that the mask is fully illuminating her iris. We may go outside now. Oh, see, I was right, I didn't. There we go. And I'm kind of crushing the darker tones of that Limbaugh ring, the black outer, outer iris ring. Uh, but again, for purposes of video, so we can see it. So just at this point, we can see the overall effect of the iris itself. And it's a little less vampire-y because we're not having it stand out in such a really strong way. Again, with the uh, ability of reducing the overall opacity of this, if we want to, we can also experiment, uh, experiment with the curve itself and start just reducing it, making things just a tad bit darker. Our goal, it seems counterproductive, right? Where the image is too dark, so we're adding light to it, but now we're making it darker again with the same method that we're using to make it brighter. But it's all about realism. It's all about good results. And this is why I constantly will stress, you have to learn why things work in Photoshop. Because the needs of this image requires us to both increase the light and take it away at the same time, depending upon the options that are available to us based upon our toolkit. So I'm gonna decrease it just a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. And she has blue eyes as well. So let's go ahead and address, we've addressed luminosity. I would do a lot more to retouch this, but for purposes of video, I think you're seeing the, the connection that learning these different tools and experimenting with it is a, a way to go to be able to do complex work. So let's go ahead and increase, uh, find a blue, that's a little bit brighter. Let's go ahead and change this one to color and borrow our uh, mask and put it over it. Let's increase the blue as vibrant as we can get it. Let's start increasing it this way just to see if we can help out the overall luminosity within the scene a little bit. It's not really helping us show it too much there. So that's pretty good uh, at this point. Obviously that doesn't look real. So let's go ahead and just reduce the opacity of it just a little bit in this scene so that we get a hint of that color that's there. Now let's go ahead and do a curves adjustment layer on top of all of this. And as we saw in the previous example, because we already have a curves adjustment layer here that's set to screen, it's adding that artificial light within the scene. Now, if we use this one and go to color dodge, it's going to build on it just a little bit more. So with a color dodge, just with no anchor points, but now if we increase it just a little bit, we get some more light into the scene, hopefully. Start increasing the overall uh, output here. Come on. And pull in this way. Show me a little bit more light, Photoshop. There we go. And now I'm gonna invert the mask and then zoom in. B for brush, change my flow to 10%, paint white just in those little specular bits and pieces through here. Go and get just a little bit more right through there. That looks pretty good. We can also build upon it again and do the same thing. We can change this to screen and see if that gives us more effect, which obviously it does, which uh, that looks a little bit better. So then we can just back this down just a tad. Controller command on the number zero to move all the way back out. So now we can see if I put all of these into a layer we can see her, or group, I'm sorry, we can see her eyes even more. And then since they're all into a group themselves, we can just pull down the opacity just a little bit to make it uh, less of a distracting effect. Because one of the things also from a design perspective that you have to think about, especially when it comes to the world of photography, if there's a lot of drama into the scene as far as the lighting is concerned, and we have a darker region within the scene, if we start adding a lot of artificial light, a lot of artificial color to the scene, it's going to make it feel fake. It can make it feel not real. That's one of the challenges of dramatic lighting and finding ways to bring some light into the eyes without making it a major focus point itself. And one of the thing that would ultimately really help this too is if we just increase the whites of her eyes. So let's do that very briefly just so that we can see those because it's really gonna help us see the eyes just a 10. And increase the whites here. Uh, I'm on a flow of 10% so it's a minimal effect. There we go. 
Now that's helping a lot to call out to the eyes. But there's one final thing, problem solving here, one final thing that we can do to really call out those eyes. And if we look at the image, her face is just a little bit dark too. So if we were to add too much light to the eyes, if the face is dark, the eyes stand out, it looks fake, right? Let's add some light to the scene. So let's use another adjustment layer that's one of my favorites to use, which is exposure set above everything let's go ahead and, and keep it below the group of layers that we just did uh, for the eyes themselves because we're going to increase the overall exposure into the scene and very gently and the gamma correction this is also a way to start essentially it, it for me it feels like it's increasing the midtones i don't i'm not an engineer i'm an artist i don't know what it does under the hood in photoshop but it feels like it pushes the midtones ever so slightly now let's go ahead and invert the mask that came with it by hitting Control or Command and the letter I. And now zooming in just a little bit, B for brush, flow of 10%, painting white onto this mask and just bring in some more light into her face, her chest and her hair in this region. Go up top, go back to that white the whites of her eyes and call it down just a little bit. This is also another wonderful example here too, because one of the stronger light sources is coming in from document left on our left, her right. So her right eye, this eye here is a little bit brighter than this one is because this one was a little bit more in shadow. So one layer, just increasing the whites of the eyes is not good enough because there's a disparagement between the two. We wanna to try to balance that in any way possible because if we don't, it makes it feel like your eyes go to her right eye, the eye that's on the left of the document before you look at the one on uh, the right of the document itself. So that's where utilizing two different layers to do the whites of the eyes is always key. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this layer one more time. And then I'm gonna click the layer mask itself, hit B for brush, change my flow to 100% and paint black over this eye to undo the effect. But since we built it up twice, the eye on document right is just a little bit brighter. And we can continue to use other ways like curves, adjustment layers, levels, and so forth. So as you can see, this is why I expanded my knowledge and moved beyond just using the layers themselves on a blending mode of screen and multiply to enhance the image because I needed to start utilizing those tools in the adjustment window to be able to call that out, to be able to start infusing more detail into it. And the reason why I didn't use them in the past is because of a couple of different reasons that we'll talk about in our final thoughts. So let's finish up with those final thoughts and finish up our tutorial today. The whole point of this YouTube channel and sharing 20 years worth of knowledge in Photoshop is to hopefully be able to guide your story of education in Photoshop and give you a better path to follow. By exposing you to the different ways of doing things and helping you to see what is possible, you can build the toolkit so that every single task, every challenge, every image that you try to work on, you will have various ways of bringing what's here to life. And that's so vitally important. It's okay to, to seek out education on my channel, other people's channels, that is a step-by-step -step process so you can create the layers or get an action to be able to create the layers to achieve the results you're looking for. As long as you do one thing, run the action, let it populate the layers, and then spend some time looking at those layers and understanding what they do. Change the blending modes of those layers. Understand how that layer was created. Go back to the menu where it was created from, make a different one, and just explore seeing past its immediate use in whatever technique that it is. This video is a little bit longer and I, I have recorded it so many times trying to shorten it down because I know that the average watch time is a certain number that's not as long as this video and I simply don't care because there will be some people that will watch this content all the way through and thank you for doing it because you are expanding your knowledge in Photoshop. You are pursuing a limit that is beyond the sky and there is no greater journey to do in art and creativity in photoshop i'm proud that you're going on it thank you for watching this video today again if the content helps you and you like it please give the video a like consider subscribing share it with others let me know in the comments below some of the elements that resonate with you if you have any questions put them in the comments below so i can get back to you and tailor further education as we go I appreciate the support in this channel. I appreciate you going on this journey. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.